Hey everybody, what's good? Character creation in Morrowind can be a little intimidating. Or maybe not. Maybe you've just made your character, but you found out that you picked a lot of dumb skills. Or maybe not the right skills to supplement. And you're just missing a lot in combat. Or your spells aren't going off, they're just failing to cast in the first place. That's right, it can be a little tough. Especially if you've only ever played in Skyrim. Because what the hell is mysticism anyway? But don't worry, this is going to help get you up to speed. Because frankly, if you're interested in playing Morrowind, you should. It's pretty cool. Let's get started. So you've told Jub your name and just set foot off the prison ship. Well, it's time to pick your character's race. Ultimately, I think new players should pick whatever race they feel like, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Morrowind is, first and foremost, an RPG. And thanks to how the skill system works, pretty much any race can play how you want it to. Keeping that in mind, let's check out the starting bonuses for all the races. On the right hand side, you'll see a list of all the skill bonuses your character will get based on this race. And at the bottom, you'll see specials, which can be passives or race specific spells. It's worth noting that some of these are classified as powers. That means that they can only be activated once per day. And that means that 24 in-game hours will need to have passed before you can use them again. And you can easily accomplish this by just resting or waiting for that long. So the easy way that I tell them apart is ones that are spells or powers say that they're used on self, meaning it's a buff for yourself, used on target, meaning it's ranged, or used on touch, meaning it's melee. They also usually have a duration. Now if the tooltip doesn't have any of that, it means that you're looking at what's called, in the character creation, an ability. That's basically a constant effect or a passive effect that's always going to be active on your character. In Race Select, there are only two exceptions to this rule. That being Argonian Water Breathing and Khajiit Night Eye. These two abilities function just like normal spells. This may be due to the fact that both of the Beast races have limited access to headgear, meaning they can't wear all helmets. In fact, there's very few that they can wear. In addition to that, the beast races cannot wear any shoes or boots, which is a big loss when it comes to enchanting, and to a lesser extent, armor in general. If any of that was hard to follow, don't worry. You'll be given an opportunity before you finish your character to look over everything and make changes if you want. There, your abilities, powers, and race-specific spells will actually be properly labeled. Now what isn't listed on the race selection screen are attributes. So I've included a table, uesp.net, to help. As you can see on the table, 40 is the base for attributes. Depending on your race, you may have up to 50 or as low as 30 in a certain attribute. And funnily enough, there are statistical differences between genders among races. As you can see, character gender can raise or lower base attributes by 10. The last thing of note on this table is that luck is at 40 for every race and every gender. Based on these starting attributes and skill bonuses, we can make a few distinctions about the races. Morrowind classifies player interactions into three different specializations, the first of which is combat, which is generally about almost all types of melee combat wearing almost all types of armor, running, and repairing. The second of which is magic specialization, which is pretty self-explanatory, but also includes enchanting, alchemy, and unarmored skills. And the last being stealth, which includes light armor, hand to hand short blade, marksman sneaking, talking to people, jumping, and picking locks. All of these specializations we'll go into later further as we cover class creation. But for now, let's look at what each of the races are best suited for based on their skill bonuses and starting attributes. When it comes to combat, Nords, Orcs, and Redguards excel the most. When it comes to magic, Altmer and Bretons. For stealth, Bosmer and Khajiit. Now, the three remaining races are more balanced, that being Argonian, Imperial, and Dunmer. While any race can excel in any area you want it to, with time and equipment and all that, these three have the easiest time with more than one specialization. When you enter the census building, 
you'll be asked for your class. Now, there are three ways you can do it, and first of which is answering a series of questions revolving hypothetical situations. This generates a class based on your answers. Next, you can pick a class from predefined classes. These predefined classes are actually used throughout the entire game. And I believe that every humanoid NPC in the entire game has a predefined class assigned to it. It's worth pointing out that several of these predefined classes have varying degrees of inefficiency about them. For example, the warrior class has both medium armor and heavy armor listed as major skills. That's not exactly something that we want. This is why I recommend you create your own custom class. I think there's very little reason to go with the other two options. So now, we'll get into the nitty gritty of creating your own class from scratch. It's easier than I'm making it sound. Now before we start making decisions, let's take a look at what we're working with. Major and minor skills. Now, unless you're planning on min-maxing your character's leveling, it, which I recommend against because it's really not necessary even at the highest levels of difficulty, thanks to enchanting. Anyways, I really recommend that your major and minor skills be skills that you're actually going to be using. So the important thing to note here is that all of your major skills will start at 30, all of your minor skills start at 15, and all of your other skills, which are called miscellaneous skills, start at 5. These numbers are before any bonuses from your specialization, which is 5 points, or from any of your racial bonuses that we looked at earlier. In addition to this, all of your major skills require only 75% of their normal amount of experience to level them. So basically, they level 25% faster. Your minor skills, they all level at exactly the base amount. So that's 100% speed or rate. However, all of your other skills that are not major or minor, as I said, miscellaneous skills, they have a 125% XP requirement. So basically, they level 25% slower than your minor skills and 50% slower than your major skills. Now let's define what exactly our specialization does for us. When you're adding skills to your major and minor categories, you'll see that every skill in the entire game is classified as either stealth, magic, or combat, as we went into a little bit earlier. When you choose a specialization, you're adding even more benefits to skills classified underneath that specialization. It doesn't matter if you've already chosen these skills as major, minor, or even if they're miscellaneous. No matter what, all skills associated with your specialization receive 5 bonus skill points and have 80% of the normal experience points required, meaning they level 20% faster. As I said, these bonus points and the experience bonus, it's all on top of existing bonuses. So things can get pretty cool and crazy. Lastly, what does it mean to favor an attribute. Well, really not that much. Basically it means you get 10 extra points in one of those attributes. Now which attributes you want higher than the others, well that's a different conversation altogether. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on which two attributes you should consider favoring right out of the game, depending on how you're interested in playing your character of course. If you're interested in the nitty gritty of each attribute, I'll have another supplemental video that goes further into detail. Frankly, it can be a little overwhelming for completely new players. Anyways, let's get back to it. First, we'll pick our two favorite attributes. I strongly recommend agility or willpower, which one you go with should depend on how you intend to approach combat in the game. If you want to use weapons, go with agility. Otherwise, if you're planning on being a spellcaster, go with willpower. Your second favorite attribute is really up to you. Speed and Endurance are both attributes that work well for any character. Intelligence and Luck, they're great for spellcasters. And Strength comes in handy if you use weapons. Personality is a bit of a tough recommendation. This is because there's many ways to alter starting disposition. If you are inclined to make a character that's more of a silver-tongued devil, I'd suggest investing in Speechcraft instead. Now before we pick our major and minor skills, it can be helpful to know how leveling works. Your character can level up anytime you increase any combination of your major and minor skills 10 times. You'll get an on-screen notification whenever you can 
sleep and level up. When you have your character rest, you'll be able to pick any of your three primary attributes to increase. Now you'll notice that all of the skills are governed by certain attributes. Increasing skills governed by the same attribute gives you a multiplier for your investment whenever your character levels up. These skill increases don't even have to be major or minor skills. They can be miscellaneous skills. Major and minor skills only count when it comes to allowing your character to level up in the first place. If you've increased your major and minor skills more than 10 times before you level your character, then any of the excess will count towards the next level. It's very important to note, though, that unfortunately, none of the excess major and minor skill increases affect future multipliers, even though they do let you level up sooner. Fortunately, if this happens, you can still use your miscellaneous skills to give you some multipliers for when you do decide to sleep and level up your character. Now, there's a few things to take away from all this information. First being, you'll only be able to increase your luck by one every time you level. This is because there aren't any skills governed by luck at all. The other takeaway is that if you really want to min-max your character's leveling, you'll pick only major and minor skills that you have zero bonuses for. Furthermore, you target specific skills that govern specific attributes and level those up 10 times. You'd want 10 major and minor and 10 to 20 miscellaneous, uh, depending on whether or not you want to level up luck. As you can tell, it's pretty difficult to level your character with maximum efficiency. Fortunately, it's really not necessary at all. The game is easy enough, and things like enchanting, custom spells, and alchemy can go a long, long way. Personally, I'd recommend just saving your game before you decide to sleep and level up your character. This way you can easily go back and get any miscellaneous skill increases, if you even want them. They really aren't necessary, like I said. <laughs> now we can finally get to picking our major skills. First off, we're gonna want at least one offensive ability. Something to do damage in combat. Under combat, we have spear, axe, blunt weapon, and long blade. Moving along, classified under magic, we have destruction, mysticism, and conjuration that all can do damage. Now it's important to note that mysticism is a bit harder to start out as a damaging school of magic. This is because damaging mysticism spells generally cost significantly more to cast than destruction ones. As for conjuration, it can sometimes be hard to get along with it by itself. However, it makes a great supplemental damaging skill. Lastly, listed under Stealth, we have Shortblade, Marksman, and Hand-to-Hand. -hand. Personally, I really recommend against using Hand-to-Hand -hand if you're a new player. It's really difficult to use, because Hand-to-Hand -hand first weakens your enemy's fatigue, and then once they're fatigued completely, they get knocked out, and then you can start punching them to damage their health. It's really not worth it. Now for your second major skill, I recommend some kind of armor. You'll need some sort of protection out there. There's heavy, medium, light, and unarmored. Um, all of these are good except for unarmored. Because the heavier the gear, the more enchanting potential it has. You can still put enchants on light armor, but not to the same magnitude as heavy. For your third major skill, I really recommend a way to open locks in the game. You can buy scrolls that open locks for you, but I really recommend against that. It's way better if you can do it yourself. So the two skills that let you open locks are security, which is just lock picking. It's random chance, it's not a mini game like the other games. And alteration, in which you cast a spell on a lock and bam, it's open. <laughs> alteration also has a lot of other useful things in it. For your final two major skills, honestly, you can fill them with whatever you like. But that said, there are special bonuses for having major skills that are spell schools. Your character will start out with a spell or two from any major skills that are spellcasting schools. There will be a separate video that covers all of those, if that's something that interests you. Now we'll move on to the minor skills. Your first minor skill? I'd really recommend enchanting. The skill boost from it being a minor skill is pretty useful to help you get started getting levels in it. The same goes for alchemy, which is actually what I'd recommend being your second minor skill. It's not so necessary, but it makes it easier to start creating potions and leveling up the skill. For your third minor skill, 
armorer is pretty useful if you want to make repairs on your equipment out in the field. You can actually fail to repair your equipment and just use up a charge on your repair hammers and repair tongs. Otherwise, you can just go back to town and repair your equipment there at a vendor for a price. The last minor skill to consider taking, if you haven't already, is mysticism. That's because mysticism goes hand in hand with enchanting because soul trap is considered a mysticism spell. This one isn't so necessary because you can get items that let you use soul trap anyways. And of course, you can always buy soul gems, but you won't always be guaranteed to find some of the best stuff. Now for any remaining minor skills, the choice is really yours. Personally, I like athletics because it levels pretty slow. Lastly, we'll pick a specialization. You can go one of two ways with this. The first way is the most intuitive. Essentially, you'd pick whatever specialization the majority of your skills are classified as. That way you get the 5 point boost and they level a bit faster. And the second route is if you want to maximize your leveling. So basically you do the complete opposite. So you'd want to pick a specialization that the fewest number of your skills are classified as. You'll level a bit slower, but depending on your previous choices, you'll probably get more levels. Now all you've got to do is name your class and enter your class description if you want. The last step in creating your character is picking a birth sign. Now, there's a lot of different choices, and most of them aren't half bad. Personally, I'd recommend against picking the Thief or the Warrior, and instead go with the Lover, because her Fortify Agility will get you about the same results, but you also get the Once Daily Power of being able to paralyze one enemy for 60 seconds. You'll lose 200 fatigue whenever you do it, but that's a very small price to pay for such a massive ace in the hole. The other two you should avoid are the Lord sign and the Serpent sign. The Serpent because it just gives you a spell that's kinda shitty compared to everything else on offer here. And avoid the Lord sign because it's going to make you take double damage from fire. That's pretty bad. Strong contenders include any of the three birth signs that give you a Magicka multiplier. Just make sure you have a plan if you pick the Apprentice and the Atronach downsides can be pretty crippling if you don't know what to do. As mentioned earlier, the Lover is a very strong choice if you're a character that uses weapons thanks to her agility and paralyze. The Steed is really good if you find the traveling speed really slow. And the Lady is great because she gives you 50 attribute points right out the gate. Ultimately, the choice is yours. Just stay away from the Lord and the Serpent. They're terrible. And that's it. You're done. The last step is just to check over your character and see if there's anything that you don't like and you can go back and change it before you head out. I'll put timestamps in the description in case you need it. Oh, and before I end this, be sure to check out my weekly Morrowind Let's Play series. Morrowind is pretty light on dialogue with audio. Peace!